Welcome to Faith Moments with Dina Marie, a weekly podcast to proclaim and to ponder our Sunday Mass readings. And greetings and happy Easter to you. We continue in this season of Easter. And in fact, this third Sunday of Easter, it's beautiful because it falls on the first day of May. We enter into a new month, a month that is dedicated in a special way to Mary, the Blessed, uh, Blessed Mother, the Holy Rosary. We have Mother's Day this month. But we begin the month on May 1st with a feast to St. Joseph. Now, because it falls on a Sunday, you might not hear about the feast of St. Joseph, but I am including him in a special way, dedicating this particular episode to St. Joseph. You'll see my St. Joseph image behind me in this particular, it looks like St. Joseph the worker, doesn't it? He's got his worker and carpentry tools. It's really special to me when I left Modern Day Radio, KBVM, the staff gave me that St. Joseph statue as kind of a, a sending away gift. And so he watches over me in my office and every once in a while we'll show up on a podcast. So St. Joseph, pray for us. And if you don't have this book, Consecration to St. Joseph by Father Donald Calloway, MIC, I would really encourage you to get a hold of this book during the year of St. Joseph. It became very popular. It was just released and it really covers a lot of just history of St. Joseph, the writers over time, saints and early church fathers who have written about St. Joseph. And just, if you'd like to learn more about you know, some of the ways we can really look to St. Joseph to guide us, to guide fathers, particularly to guard our church. He's the patron of the universal church. So he really is there to guide our church into the kingdom of God uh, with Christ, his son, and the blessed mother, his bride and his spouse. And so I'm going to open with one of the prayers. There's a lot of prayers included in this book. Some of them are consecration prayers, and maybe you have made a consecration to St. Joseph. I hope you have. If you haven't, this book, Consecration to St. Joseph, will help guide you through that process. But I wanted to pick two very unique prayers that I really never heard about until I started reading this book. And so I'll open with the prayer that's called A Prayer of the Holy Cloak Novena. And so it's not the cloak of Dr. Strange from the Marvel movies, but it is the Holy Cloak of Joseph. And if you start to think about the life of Joseph, his call to care for, to protect, and to guide into safety, Mary and Jesus, you may get a sense of why this cloak would be so important to cover and protect them from evil and from the enemy. So let's begin our prayer of this third week of Easter with this prayer of the Holy Cloak. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O glorious patriarch St. Joseph, you who were chosen by God above all men to be the earthly head of the most holy of families, I beseech you to accept me within the folds of your holy cloak, that you may become the guardian and custodian of my soul. From this moment on, I choose you as my father, my protector, my counselor, my patron, and I beseech you to place in your custody my body, my soul, all that I am, all that I possess, my life, and my death. Look upon me as one of your children. Defend me from the treachery of my enemies, invisible or otherwise. Assist me at all times, in all my necessities, console me in the bitterness of my life, and especially at the hour of my death. Say but one word for me to the divine Redeemer, whom you deemed worthy to hold, whom you were deemed worthy to hold in your arms, and to the Blessed Virgin Mary, your most chaste spouse. Request for me those blessings which will lead me to salvation. Include me amongst those who are most dear to you, and I shall set forth to prove myself worthy of your special patronage. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Great prayer to begin this third Sunday of Easter and on the feast day of Saint Joseph, May 1st. Well, on this third Sunday, again, if you are continuing to read each and every day in the daily readings for Easter, I've mentioned this many times, 
but as a new convert, as an adult, I never grew up experiencing the, the Easter season, hearing all of the Acts of the Apostles or, or a lot of the Acts of the Apostles. And so Monday through Saturday, you'll hear these different accounts. And then on Sunday, we'll have our Sunday reading from the Acts. And so there's a lot that you will get if you read every day in the daily mass readings of how the early church formed. You know, what were the ups and downs of the apostles and, and what was Peter facing as they went went out and proclaimed the name of Jesus. And so we'll hear a little bit of that today. Today's account on May 1st is from Acts chapter 5, and we'll start with verse 27. When the captain and the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sins. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. The Sanhedrin ordered the apostles to stop speaking in the name of Jesus and dismissed them. So they left the presence of the Sanhedrin, rejoicing that they had been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm comes from Psalm 30. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you drew me clear and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praise to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime his goodwill. A nightfall, weeping enters in, but with the dawn, rejoicing. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You changed my mourning into dancing. O oh Lord, my God, forever will I give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. The second reading this Sunday comes from Revelation chapter 5. I, John, looked and heard the voices of many angels who surrounded the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They were countless in number, and they cried out in a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom and strength, honor and glory and blessing. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea, everything in the universe cry out. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor, glory and might forever and ever. The four living creatures answered them, Amen, and the elders fell down and worshipped. The word of the Lord. Our gospel reading today comes from the gospel of John chapter 21. At that time, Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together, there were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore. But the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. 
So they cast it and were not able to pull it in because of the number of fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, for they were not far from shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore full of 153 large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner, the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon Peter answered him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. He then said to Simon Peter a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon Peter answered, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was distressed that Jesus had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Amen, amen, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to dress yourself and go where you wanted. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands, and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. And he said this signifying what kind of death he would glorify God. And when he had said this, he said to him, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, as I mentioned, when you read the daily readings, particularly in Easter season, you really get the full the full fullness of the story. And so for the last couple of days before this Sunday, you're hearing about, again, the beginnings of the church, the power of the Holy Spirit guiding the courageous apostles. And right before this episode where the captain and the court officers are accusing Peter and his disciples of preaching in that name, you know, they're so anxious about that name because what that name signifies is the truth. Right before this, Peter and some of the apostles were thrown into the court, uh, not in the court, into the prison. And of course, the angel released them from prison. They go back into the temple early in the morning, and that's where they're caught, again, preaching in the name of Jesus. And so I think in, in this particular reading we get on Sunday, there's such this focus on the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend. That it is at the name, it is in the truth of Jesus, Son of God, that all is created, all is glorified, that that is where we go to the Father. And the close of this particular part says they, they left the presence of the Sanhedrin because they are not going to change their ways. They're not going to say, oh, we're sorry, we won't do that. They are going to stay firm that we will follow and obey God. We have to follow God rather than men. There may be laws that men have created in this time, in this place that are out there, but we will not follow those laws if they compromise our ultimate law, which is to follow the Lord. And so they say that they've been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. And I want to go into the scripture in, if you read just a little bit more, which we don't get in the, in the readings for the lectionary, but in Acts, it says, and all day long, 
both at the temple and in their homes, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the Messiah, Jesus. I love that emphasis at the very last verse, uh, that's verse 42 of chapter 5, that the apostles, no matter where they're in their home, they're in the temple, they will proclaim the name Jesus, the Messiah. And we too are called to proclaim that name. It just gives me a lot of courage. It gives me that strength that when worldly things, the things that are of man, start to cloud or start to distract us from obeying God, we have to go back to an obedience to God to obey the name of Jesus Christ. We must obey God rather than men. Those are the words of the apostles in the Acts of the Apostles. As always, the Psalms seem to give me such joy, such encouragement that that I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. So my question to you is, have you been rescued? When have you been rescued? How many times in your life have you been rescued? If you think over the time of your life, of the times that you find yourself in darkness, going the wrong way, hanging out with the wrong crowd, it could be in your work environment. Just the the talk in the lunchroom or at the water cooler over a cup of coffee or in a meeting that goes the wrong direction, that goes to judgment, that goes to gossip, that leads us away from the Lord. I will praise you, Lord. You have rescued me. Call upon the name of the Lord. When you find yourself, and many times you're in a grocery store, I've, I've found myself, and you hear uh, a cursing, you hear anger, you hear violence being shouted against one another. Maybe you just hear this um, taking the Lord's name in vain. And you didn't instigate this. You're just hearing it or observing it. I observe driving down the highway, road rage. I mean, there's anger. There's, there's this rush that is certainly not of the peace of God. And so praise the Lord. Praise his name in your heart, in your mind. You don't need to verbalize it out loud, although maybe you can. I will praise you, Lord. You have rescued me. Rescue that person who has just said your name in vain, who has just cursed their child in a public place. You know, just just help this coworker who's depressed you know, sing the praise of the Lord and give thanks to his holy name. In the Acts of the Apostles, we hear how important it is to praise the name, to teach the name, to talk about the name of Jesus. And so the Psalms remind us, even in those difficult times, here it says, Hear, O Lord, have pity on me. Uh, at nightfall, weeping falls in, enters in, but with the dawn rejoicing, you know, with the light of Christ, we may go through an evening of darkness, of illness, of a difficult relationship, of hard times at work, of financial stress. But at the dawn, at the light of Christ, be reminded, be refreshed, be renewed, be rescued. The Lord is our rescuer. I'm going to jump right into the Gospel of John. And so many things have been mentioned, commentaries written about this particular piece of scripture with the asking of Peter three times, do you love me? Unfortunately, in the English language, the word love, we only have one word for love. And so there are our, our commentaries will talk about the different levels of love that may be referred to in Jesus' statement and Peter's. But one of the things that I love at the beginning of this is that so far the apostles have seen Jesus twice, that he encountered them that first night of the resurrection, and then a week later, again with Thomas, because he wasn't there the first time, and that's the account that we hear last Sunday, is he shows his nail marks, he shows the wounds, the scars, that Jesus has chosen to keep those scars, that he wanted the apostles and us to see that he was the one crucified. That didn't go away. Those scars don't go away. But in the resurrection, 
they're glorified, that our scars of sin are glorified through the sacraments, through receiving absolution at confession, to receiving Holy Eucharist, particularly at that moment of baptism. I just witnessed on the second Sunday of Easter, the baptism of three children. And it was just so glorious to see them, you know, being covered and poured over with the power of the Holy Spirit at baptism. So Jesus's scars are glorified, but they are still there. And here's the third encounter. And Jesus has to find them fishing. I don't think, I, I, for me, now it doesn't identify the names of every of the seven, but I don't think that somebody like Matthew would have been there because he wasn't a fisherman. But seven of the early disciples went with Simon Peter, six and then joined seven, and they go back to what they know. They're familiar with, they're good at fishing. And Simon Peter, for whatever reason, decides to go back to his old job. Well, he was called to be a fisher of men. So Jesus encounters them where they're at, still probably in this dazed and confused sense. And, and, and so Jesus encounters us where we're at. We may regress and go back to a moment of comfort, our comfort zone. We may step back into a mode that maybe we're more comfortable in, in a relationship, in our ministry, in our prayer life, you know, and then Jesus, he's so accompanying. He's such a companion. He wants to meet us where we are. If we're not at this polished up state and the disciples weren't at a polished up state yet, he will meet them on the shore. You know, and, and again, I think I've mentioned this before when we were at that Lake of Tiberias and we were at the Sea of Galilee on the pilgrimage that I went on a few years ago, we were at that location. And in fact, the church that's built right there has this area where supposedly that's where the charcoal fire was. And that was probably out of all the places that I traveled when we went to the Holy Land, I just loved that place. And to think, this is where Jesus encountered Simon Peter. He again gave him that initiative that he will be the guide. He will be the leader. He will be feeding the lambs and the sheep. He is the one, her first pope. And through Peter, the line of succession of popes since. And that Jesus encounters us. He wants to cook us breakfast. And that he allows the disciples, right? They were not successful in their fishing adventure, but Jesus encounters them, gives them a little help. They catch 153 fish, bring some of what you have. You know, so Jesus recognizes sometimes we're not up to par and that's okay. He welcomes us, he invites us, and now says, share and bring some of what you have. Bring those skills bring what you have. He invited the disciples to bring those fish and to share in the abundance that Jesus has. Because when we bring them, then we start to become part of that supernatural, some of that grace-filled connection with our Lord. See, Jesus calls out to Simon Peter and he calls him by his natural name. It says, Simon Peter, uh, son of, uh, I have to turn the page here. It says, Simon Peter, I need to find it here, son of John. Simon Peter, son of John, do you love me? And so there's a recognition of Simon Peter's natural name, his natural state. And yet the Lord recognizes where we start in that natural state but then he's calling us to a more supernatural state, to be his, to be his beloved son, his beloved daughter in the Lord. And so with that, when we accept the grace that the Lord will give us, if we just turn over what we have, here's what we caught. Here's my little bit, right? The five loaves and the few fish. Let's just give to Jesus, give to Jesus what you have. I don't have a lot. All I have are tears. All I have are my concerns and worries. All I have is this, this difficulty in my life. 
Give it to him. Give it to him. And he will be, bring about such beauty in what we have. Know who you are. You know, Simon, as I mentioned, is the son of John. But know whose you are. Now Simon is a follower of the Messiah, the son of God. He is a beloved son. And now he will begin his church. From the natural to the supernatural is what we see being shown in this gospel. And finally, of course, the three times can also signify the three denials that Peter had at the crucifixion of Jesus. You know, this is sin being replaced with the, the, the welcoming of the Lord. And yes, I love you. I love you three times that we, we have another chance. Our God is a God of second chances. And aren't we grateful for that? We are, we are a new creation when we are a beloved son and daughter of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let's close with this prayer. And I started with the Holy Cloak prayer, and now I want to pray, if I can find it here, this beautiful prayer. And it is called the Prayer to St. Joseph, Terror of Demons. Let us pray. St. Joseph, terror of demons, cast your solemn gaze upon the devil and all his minions and protect us with your mighty staff. You fled through the night to avoid the devil's wicked designs. Now with the power of God, smite the demons as they flee from you. Grant special protection, we pray, for children, fathers, families, and the dying. By God's grace, no demon dares approach while you are near. So we beg of you always, be near to us. Amen. St. Joseph, pray for us. May you have a joyful week.